Today we will analyze two kinds of models and uh, for both of, of them we will give a practical interpretation. Concerning the first model uh, we will see, we will interpret it as a model of extraction of fossil fuels and uh, pollution in terms of uh, greenhouse gases that once released into the atmosphere may lead to climate change. You have here on the slides two, uh, two profiles of two academics that has been jointly awarded of the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2018. Uh, that was devoted that year on studies concerning uh, long-term economic growth. One of them is a growth theorist and the other one is an environmental economist. Which one do you think is the environmental economist? The one on the left or uh, the one, this one on the right? Well, right and left. Well, I don't think it's hard. Environmental economists are pretty easily recognizable among economists. In conferences, you can easily spot them for a more uh, relaxed or informal attitude. It is the one on the left, William Nordhaus of the Yale University. He is the one that developed the, the model was core, was main aspect we will study today, the dynamic integrated uh, uh, model of climate and the economy here, DICE or his uh, regional uh, version, RISE. The key of this model is to really having together the physical aspect of climate change. So, for example, the damaging physical terms with, within an economic reasoning, uh, within an economic model. Uh, the second one is Paul uh, Rumer of the New York University. He works on technology, but not thinking to it as something exogenous, as it was treated in grow models before, but as something that is part of the economic grow and is itself an endogenous output of, of the grow. Uh, these two things, climate change and, uh, and uh, uh, exogenous, uh, uh, endogenous grow models, uh, are indeed very related because to deal with climate change, society has to diverge part of its output or what is produced to, to fight for, for it, to mitigate climate change. And part of this output will be in terms of uh, research and uh, development uh, uh, to find solutions for climate change. And here is, it will be the main message that we will go out today uh, with this kind of models, but we will have some cost of climate change, surely. We will see how to quantify and how to consider and deal with, uh, with this cost. But on the other side, we will have also a cost for any potential mitigation of climate change. And uh, not uh, uh, surprisingly by now, we will see that the optimal level to fight for climate change, to mitigate for climate change, will be when marginal cost of fighting for climate change is equal to the marginal cost of climate change damage. We are hence now going to study the aggregate pollution model, where the pollutant is directly linked with the no renewable resource from which uh, uh, it depends. And we're going to interpret this model as uh, fossil fuel extractions and pollution leading to global change. Our objective will be similar to those in the previous uh, uh, lessons to find the optimal uh, uh, extractions and pollution path, but this time given two different trade-offs. The first one is the trade-off we already saw uh, concerning uh, am I extracting the resource, the natural resource now and enjoying a higher uh, consumption or I'm leaving it for uh, future uh, uh, generations. And the second trade-off is concerning instead the, the fact that production is linked with, with pollution. So 
the idea is that extracting or consuming uh, uh, the uh, non renewable resource general some pollutions. This pollution accumulate and the stock of uh, this pollution damage the society. And it can be done in two different ways. The first one is a direct damage of the society. This is pretty evident. Just for example, the a landscape of uh, oil feeds uh, may have uh, a direct effect on people's utilities. But we can think also on a more indirect way to reduce uh, the utility of the society that goes through reducing the production uh, possibilities. For example, uh, some agricultural area that uh, uh, become uh, no longer available for agricultural production due to climate change. And uh, we are now going to revert to our first, uh, uh, the model of our first lessons where we had explicitly a production function. This is because so we can really see the uh, the production and the allocations of uh, of uh, uh, the what the society can produce.